Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here in San Jose, California at the 2009 Advanced Imaging Conference. And I'm speaking with Egan Derbel of ASA Systems, better known as Astro System Austria, right? Or as you would say, Astro Systeme Austria. Systeme. Right. <laughs> yes, it's true. All right. You've got some interesting equipment. You've been at uh, these AIC conferences for several years and you've been bringing more advanced stuff every year. A few years ago, you started out with these very fast. Uh, Newtonian astrographs, yes. which are the one we're looking at here is a 12 inch? This is 10 inch. This is a 10 inch. And this is an F? F3.6. F3.6. All right, but before we go back to that, I, the, what's really interesting is what we're looking at here at the mount. This is brand new technology for astronomical telescope mounts. And one of the things is, and I don't know if the camera can pick this up, this is essentially silent. This thing is swinging back and forth right now and not making a bit of noise. Yes. So. Tell me what's going on here. Yes, with this mount we bring the professional technology from the uh, great big uh, telescopes here also for the amateur. This is direct drive driven mount. This is, uh, means there is no gear. So the shaft itself is part of the motor? Yes. No gears? No gears. It's all driven, it's essentially done with magnets. <laughs> yes, uh, on the shaft there's a magnet magnet with some poles and in the housing there is uh, the wiring and so you have a motor this turn one times per day without gear without gears and the other thing is it's very very precise tell me a little bit about how all of that works yes this is uh, because we have the encoders note on the motor so we have it on the axis normal you have a gear and the encoder is uh, behind the gear and so you have backlash and measured also the backlash. And so here is on the axis, and we read out this encoder. The encoder has a use able resolution from 0.03 arc seconds, and we read out this 100 times per second. And so the computer knows every time where is the mount and where should be the mount, and we control it 100 times per second. And so we have this position. So in other words, you've got the shaft turning an encoder. Mm -hmm. And this encoder's got very high resolution, got the computer looking at that encoder a hundred times a second, yeah. and it's saying, is the shaft in the right place? Mm -hmm. And if it's not, you can issue a correction. So you yes. can issue corrections up to a hundred times a second yes. to make this track. Yeah. So that gets rid of all your periodic error. You've yeah. got precise tracking, but you can also respond to things like wind gusts, right? Yes, also wind gusts, because the encoder's on the shaft, the knows when wind is coming and turn the tube in the wrong direction, uh, the motors going against them. So it's, so it's hold in the same position what the, the telescope should be. And I know one of the things that we can't demonstrate on video, but is if you actually go to press against this, you can feel the telescope sort of press back at yes. you. It says, hey, you're pushing me where I don't want to be, so I'm going to put a little bit of force and go back. It's almost like it has a life of its own. Yeah. Okay. But it's very, very impressive. And of course, you have incredible slewing speed. Yes, this is because uh, the torque motor have a very high dynamic, one to 10,000 about this and more. And so we can one turn by day and also one turn in few seconds. Just a few seconds. This uh, <laughs> software called AltaSlew is a very professional software. It's used in the very big scopes, in the meter class telescopes. And so you have also satellite tra tracking and accuracy like one arc second with a guiding speed of more than three, five uh, degrees per second. So with the pointing model, you eliminate all failures like tubus flex, refraction in the sky, also uh, all what uh, on this... Um, all Sorry. When you, I'll take you back for a second. You started to say refraction. So you can actually model the atmospheric refraction and correct for that? Yes. Yes. The pointing model means that you make some stars by photo, by imaging, or also to center it in a crosshair. Yeah. And there you storage this position. And with the encoders, you measurement in the 0.03 arc seconds and we know exactly how is the refraction in this uh, part of the 
Yeah. So uh, a pointing model, you, you, as you say, you put a crosshair eyepiece in or you use your camera, you look at uh, 10 or a dozen stars at different parts of the sky, point it carefully at that and mark it. And then from there, the software makes a model of the pointing. How often do you have to create a new model? Will you, can you save a model for weeks at a time if it's a permanently mounted scope? Yes, you can save it, but when you have it fixed mounted, you need only one pointing model and you're good for for, uh, for full year or longer. All right. All, only when you change the optic or also the setup, you can make a new pointing model. If you have also different weight. Yes. Yeah, different weight. Different, weight. different structure. You have two telescopes, one pointing model for this telescope and for the other one. But when you go in the field, every time you need a pointing model when you will have this high accuracy. All right, I got a couple of other quick questions. One, I see features here. You've got obviously uh, USB ports on the front and I can see on the back you've got some power outputs. So you've got cabling which is going through the mount so that you can power equipment that's attached to the telescope without having wires dangling off. All right, so is this require sophisticated power? Is this a 12 volt system? 12 yes, volt? in this case it's 12 volt and you need only for normal guiding speed a half to one amps and so with a normal car battery in the field you can use it the whole night. Whole night with a car battery, yeah. nothing special. And this is this is the DDM 60, 60. so the this smallest. is a, a, a mobile mount. Roughly, oh what's the capacity? The capacity is 55 pounds. 55 pounds and the whole mount itself weighs roughly? 45. 45? 45? 45 pounds. Not bad. All right, I got a couple of other things here. I noticed you got a little laser light symbol. What's yeah. that all about? This laser helps you by polar alignment in the field. Uh, you can turn it on here. Okay, I can see that. So it's going the direction to Polaris. You make the rough uh, correction here to this line and you'll be there one degree, roughly. Here you've got this built-in laser that's aligned with the polar axis. You set it down, turn it on. It's like a laser pointer. You can see it going in the sky. Just adjust everything so it's pointed at Polaris. You're within a degree of the pole to start your polar alignment routine. Exactly, Tennessee. Very impressive. That's a nice little device. And with software, you can make it very fine. About one arc minute polar alignment. Just precision. using software routine, pointing at yes. stars and making yes. your adjustments from you there. Need, you need only four to five stars to make this polar alignment with the software. All right, so this is the smallest of several mounts that you've got, the DDM-60. The 60 is the size of the shaft? Yes, the size right. of the shaft in millimeters. And you have behind us the? The 85 uh, carried about 140 pounds and have the shaft diameters of one, uh, 85 millimeters. So here's an example. I can see you've got power that goes up to the electric focuser on there, all fed through the mount. Very similar features to the other mount, just a much larger system. And then while you don't have one here, I see you've got a picture over here. This is an observatory class mount. Yes. This is our biggest. This present time is 160. And the shaft diameter is 160 diameter, yes. And they have very big encoders and this uh, resolution of 0 0.007 arc seconds. Amazing. So you started out by saying one of your visions was that you wanted to bring this professional technology to the amateur. I mean, with the direct drive, and you've started to get there. Where, where do you see this as, what, what do you see this as delivering for amateurs? Yes, uh, in present, most of our customers use this without auto guiding because it's so precise, this mount, that it doesn't need it. So you can take exposures 20, 30 minutes long? Yes. With also, no auto guiding. Narrow Sim band and so on. Simply because you're correcting for all the atmospheric refraction, flexures in the telescope, yes. and tracking accuracies. Right. So you've got that, and also this is obviously great technology for the remote observing, for people who are right at their telescope when they're working. Yes, it's, uh, it's easier to use, also remotely, no problems, because you don't uh, have no auto guiding and the telescope make it automatically. Oh, not all the auto, the setup that goes with auto guiding yeah. all goes away. Yes. So, and you've got them in the field doing that too. Yes. Wow, very impressive. Uh, more material than we can possibly cover here in the video. I presume that you've got plenty of it on your website. Yeah. All right, and the website is? www.astrosysteme.com. AT. AT for Austria. Yes. All right, Egan, thank you very, very much for this. I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here in San Jose at the 2009 Advanced Imaging Conference.